essence of pro bono is essentially voluntary yeah. and, and um, honourable. And I think if you make it mandatory, you lose some of that sort of honourable nature, that ethical nature. Uh, so it's important that it remain voluntary and, and, and uh, people have a personal choice to do it. The important thing is that pro bono is treated the same as other areas of law. So as the pro bono practice gets larger, then it needs good management and good coordination. In fact, it's essential to have good coordination even to grow a pro bono practice. The pro bono coordinator needs to be proactive in terms of getting out there. So some of the larger firms have grown really you know, impressive pro bono practices and the recognition of that is through making those coordinators partners and acknowledge them as an equal within the partnership of the firm. I think it's practical for all lawyers to do uh, pro bono legal work mm -hmm. and it really depends on what sort of, I mean, the proof in that in a sense is you look at what sole practitioners do, they, they and large firms are often the best performers in terms of the amount of pro bono legal work. It's the ones in between that perhaps have a little bit more difficulty um, down at the small end, perhaps because they don't quite have the capacity or the resources to do it and they don't have the flexibility, it can put quite a burden on a small firm. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we've seen over the last three or four years quite markedly is that pro bono ethos moving into the mid-tier law firm now. There are a number of sort of the larger or the second tier firms that are signed up to the National Pro Bono Aspirational Target out of appointed national coordinators and appointed coordinators in each of their offices. And so we're seeing those firms join uh, the lar their larger firm colleagues in terms of having a more sophisticated and coordinated pro bono practice. Economic pressures are always a factor mm -hmm. for firms in terms of how much capacity they might have to direct towards pro bono work. And the other factor is culture and the internationalisation of Australian firms at the moment I think is also having an influence on how that firm's pro bono performance might change moving forward. Um, because they're merging with firms that have different cultures. Some have a sympathetic pro bono culture, some may not. Um, I mean, two examples, if you like, k &L Gates merging with Middletons. k &L Gates have a strong uh, a culture, a pro bono culture in the States. They're actually bringing that to Middletons, and so k &L Gates have recently become a signatory to the target and are increasing their pro bono practice. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose the other example really is Mallison's merging with King and Wood. I don't think King and Wood, coming from the Chinese background, have that much of a pro bono culture. And so that's a difficult discussion for them in terms of where that might end up. Uh, you know, it's a much more difficult cultural um, change for them. So internationalisation is having an effect. Uh, economic conditions will always have an effect. But what the American experience is, is if you um, wind back your pro bono practice during a downturn in economic conditions, it's quite difficult to get it back up to the same level again.